Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Tengu230. I hope you guys are having a great day. So welcome back to Destiny, the Taken King. As you can tell by my voice, I'm still recovering from the cold I had on the weekend. And I got a little bit loopy. Uh, I put a box on my head. I, <laughs> I don't know. I probably won't do it again. Uh, but we'll see. So I also want to say thank you for all the comments that I got for speedy recovery. So in this episode... I'm going to switch things up again and do the quest for the Arc ability for the Warlock, which I play as, known as the Stormcaller. So, I hope you guys enjoy. What does it mean to be a Warlock? Power. Only warlocks understand true power. True power lies in knowledge, in understanding. Power channeled, not controlled. The storm is raw power. The trance is true understanding. Both are required. The storm caller then is both the question and the answer, and thus what it means to be a warlock. My hidden agents discovered a powerful vex, a conductive mind below the bones of Freehold. It has the arc source you need. Find it. it won't be easy. The Freehold tunnels are still crawling with vex. Good. Storms emerge from conflict. All right, so as any Destiny player knows, we've been down this corridor <laughs> so many times, you know, fighting a boss or even just farming for Vex Ultras and Majors, because pretty much what I was doing before was like, there was an uh, Ultra over there that's a Minotaur and there's also one that is a, a Harpy, so that was pretty much like a farming point, at least for me when I was doing, or actually when bounties were different back then. So, pretty much know this place in and out. Although, I think this time around with the Taken King, it's actually pretty cool going back to these areas because instead of having the same enemy over again, uh, they're actually having different kinds of encounters, which is pretty cool, so. We just gotta get through this. As you can tell too, I'm also using the bad juju again so because this was a previous recording. And one odd thing that I found was like, this is the only time I was using a sidearm because I haven't had any sidearms drop for me um, since this time. Which is weird because I thought more sidearms would actually drop. So I remember going through this part the first time ever, back with the original campaign, and I thought that having this area pretty much completely dark was a cool touch. Normally there would be Vex here, and you can see like their glowing bits, especially with the goblins and the hobgoblins. You can see their chest, and I think there were minotaurs in here, I'm trying to remember. Uh, I mean, you can see their eyes, so... At least for here, you see Cabal, and you can actually still make them out due to the light that they emit. So we got Scions popping in and out. Trying to get headshots for them. I think, for me, when I was first playing, I think the Scions were not really annoying to kill. Although they can be in groups. It was just the fact that those guys were like so thin and it was hard to get headshots, but after a while, once you start learning their behavior, they're actually pretty easy to dispatch. So this is pretty much the same path that any Destiny player knows to take when it was one of the campaign missions. Aura? There's an army down here. Overcome it. They will keep you from reaching their master. Where at the end of the train tunnel, there was a Minotaur boss. And I think that daily showed up so many times that I don't even remember what the boss looks like. Also, 
holy crap, there's a shit ton of enemies here. And I wish they were clustered more together so I could get like the maximum amount of orbs I could get using the Nova Bomb. But yeah, so you got the boss at the end. So I'm, I'm, we're just like so used to doing that daily like way too often that after a while I just said screw it. I don't want to do this daily anymore. Let's just fight the same boss over again. But I like how they're doing it here because I don't know, just like the story part in it makes this feel new. It, it, it's a little, it's weird. I should probably just say like it's it's weird, but it's cool at the same time because not only does it make it feel fresh, it just because there's story involved. Like I don't mind going through this area, like you know for for not like however many times I'm gonna go through this if I even decide to like replay this part again. So from here, as you can see, we gotta destroy three conductive disciples. Which they are essentially goblins, hobgoblins. So after we destroyed them, was supercharged with arc energy. The whole area is saturated with power. Find the conductive mind. You're not finished until its arc is yours. We just gotta go in deeper into the tunnel and find the conductive mind. So everything's pretty quiet up until this point. I think from here I see the first enemy. They don't notice me at first. So usually <laughs> usually when I play I try to take out the easiest ones first. Because usually like a lot of the smaller enemies, I should say the weaker enemies when they're grouped up, they still pack a hell of a punch when there's like five of them firing at you. Compared to like, um, I would probably say it's like maybe the equivalent of maybe like one strong enemy. So I always try to take those guys out first and then focus on on the bigger baddies. And then usually after that, I try to take out the snipers because the Vex snipers, the hobgoblins right there that you can see, they're they're pretty damn accurate. And I still remember going through the Nexus Mind Nightfall and trying to solo it. I actually did solo it because the Warlock had the Sunsinger ability, so the Resurrection helped a lot. But one shot from a Sniper from a Hobgoblin in a Nightfall, that would just essentially take you out in one hit, so... Always had to be careful with those Hobgoblins. Let's take out this Minotaur. Take him out with the Melee using the Voidwalker. And I think I placed that grenade way too close, but I still got the tracking one, so I got them both. So right here, got to take out some more hobgoblins, and we got a portal on this side, which taken out with the bad juju. I was actually surprised at how easy that was, uh, <laughs> like, able to get destroyed using the bad juju. It's like, I don't remember taking them out that easy, even with the newer weapons that we got. So since I felt like the enemies weren't really clustered together as much as I wanted and I had the super ready, I just figured, hey, why the hell not? Let's use it. So w when I use the Voidwalker initially, I like using the one explosive bomb. But eventually, as you can hear the static electricity coming through, uh... Eventually, I did the uh, where it splits into three projectiles so I can get like a larger range. So, the conductive mind definitely down here. I think that's the conductive mind. So, we pretty much got to take this thing out to it seems like to unleash the power of the storm collar. So, as I take out the tiny adds, the conductive mind keeps coming closer. I got to keep backing up and use that pillar for cover as I continue to take out ads that get annoying. You know, like, you know, mosquitoes, you gotta 
gotta shoot out of the way. So it's a good thing the conductive mind isn't too powerful. So it only takes about like three clips from the bad juju to take it out. Of course, we've neutralized the conductive mind. Then I hope you've learned from its defeat. Let's teach you to wield lightning, Guardian. So from here, level up, and we get to do the second part of the Stormcaller quest. Mars. The Vex crawl across her surface, seeking out rare arc storms, bathing in their power like hot springs. We have located one on the far frontier. If you are to call the storm, to learn the trance, you must go. And let nothing stand against you. Find a space to clear your mind, Guardian. This is how a Stormcaller begins. So I found this part of the quest pretty cool because you're actually in a PvP map and I didn't expect that. So, like, I've run through this PvP map, like, I would say more than most of the other maps, so I kind of know how to get around here. But since they made this like a PvE zone, I thought that was a pretty cool touch. So from here we have to find this kind of like meditation font as we're taking out the Vex. And as you can hear all around you, you can hear the rain, you can hear the lightning. Storm is coming. And this is... We're on the verge of getting the Stormcaller subclass right here. So we have to meditate three times. And we're going to the first one right now. As I'm a little paranoid, I'm always, I'm always, you always gotta look at the radar, obviously. And the more solid the red is, the closer the enemy is. I was wondering if enemies were going to appear as uh, my warlock meditates at the font, and true enough, they start coming out. So we gotta do it again, we gotta find another font to meditate. And this is pretty much like one of the only times I really use <laughs> a sidearm here because like I said I haven't had that many sidearm drops. Which is weird because I thought there would be a lot more sidearms. And a minotaur comes over here, thank god he's not an ultra. And he's only in red health. So avoid grenade. Pretty much dispatches him quickly. And I just take care of the rest of the guys that are ganged up with him. The storm begins to obey. Once more, Guardian. I thought I didn't really have to go that far, or actually I thought I was I needed to go a little farther to find the next font, but it was just like right there. So that was actually pretty cool. I got a good advantage over here since uh, I got a height advantage so I can see clearly across, like down below and, and over, so no surprises for how the Vex are going to be coming up on me. Your lightning walks its own path. A show of force is in order. Call the lightning and become one. You will either rise a storm caller or not at all. I'm curious about all the warlocks that tried to be a storm caller and died. But this cutscene, awesome.
our storm caller rises. Let's turn our attention to the Vex. They're here for the Ark. Show them the Ark. So I love how Akora just says, You got the Ark ability, Stormcaller, show them how it's done. I'm like, That's awesome. So it's pretty much like the next two minutes of me having the super pretty much destroying all the Vex, just electrocuting the crap out of them uh, with this white hot electricity. And it's cool how they give you this chance to just learn how to use it as your super. Just as soon as it's drained, it just goes right back up. So, I'm going to end the episode right here. Um, I'll see you guys at the end. You guys enjoy all the storm collar power. None stand against you, and the wind is at your back. You are a storm caller, and you wear the mantle well. The storm is both an answer and a question. As you carry your spark from this place, remember this, and teach this lesson to those that would drag you from the skies. Alright, so that's it for this episode of Destiny, The Taken King, where you saw my Warlock get the Stormcaller ability. I do want to try to get the Nightsock ability for the Hunter, but since I have all these quests I have to do for the Warlock, it's I feel like it's going to take a little while before I hop onto another character. So anyway, uh, that's going to be it for this episode. So if you guys made it this far, thanks for watching, and as always, take care, and Tanker230 out. Alright guys, game on everybody.